Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to do some comparisons between Yolovi 8 and the new Yolovi 9 model that has just been released. So we have a new member in the YOLO family. We now have YOLO V9. And in this video, we're going to do some comparisons. So we're both going to test a bunch of different versions. We have the nano, small, medium, and all of those models with YOLO V8. And then we also have some new variations with YOLO V9. We're going to do some comparisons on some complex videos, different scenarios, different classes, and so on, both on different image sizes. And I'm also going to show you how we can both do end friends with YOLO V9 and YOLO V8. So you can both test it out on images, videos, your webcam, or whatever you have directly with only a few commands or a few lines of code. So first of all here, let's just jump straight into the YOLOV9 GitHub repository. If we just scroll a bit further down, we can then see these benchmarks where they're comparing the new YOLOV9 model and this Gelan model with all the other YOLO models and versions out there. So right now we can see that this is the new state-of-the-art model, but is it actually like the new state-of-the-art model? How does it compare to YOLOV8 when we're actually like running it on practical examples, practical use cases, and data sets. Just because we have a new state of the art model here on the Coco data set, it doesn't mean that it is the best model to use for your own custom data sets. We might find situations where YOLO V8, YOLO V6, YOLO V7 are actually like better compared to the newer models coming out. So it really depends on your data set and application. So one thing that we're going to take a look at is how good is this model at detecting objects, like smaller objects at a distance in the camera, and then also like how consistent is it at actually like keeping detection so it's not flickering too much back and forth. So we're going to take the same videos, compare them, YOLO V8, YOLO V9, and then we're going to see who is still the superior, which of the models should we use in our own applications and projects going forward. So if you just go a bit further down, we can then see we have these new variations. So we have the small medium model, and then we also have the C and the E version. And you can kind of like see the comparisons up here. So if we're taking, for example, the model here with 25 million parameters, so it is the C model. If we go over and take a look at it, 25 it is around here. So that is comparable to the medium model from ULV8. So those are the two main models that we're going to test out just to do side by side comparisons. Because again, here we can see that it, it acts like has the same mean error position, but the model size is half the size of the YOLV8 model. But that doesn't mean that the new model is acting like faster compared to YOLV8. So let's definitely test that out as well. If we scroll a bit further down, we can actually see how we can run the results to have a detect.py file, which we can directly use as we're using the commands from Autolytics with their YOLO command. So we only need to specify a few arguments and also the source that we want to do inference on, and then we're up and running and we can do our comparisons. So let's not jump straight into code and let's just see, do some comparisons over here to the left. I have a bunch of videos that we can try to run through. So we're going to run through some of them. I think this might be actually like pretty interesting to run through because we have a lot of small objects. We have some cars very far Far away. Let's see if we're able to actually like do detections with this new YOLV9 model compared to YOLV8. And also just to see like how does it perform on small objects, how fast does it run. We're going to get like the, the milliseconds that it takes to do inference for a single image, both for YOLV8 and also YOLV9. So we're going to compare that. We're going to throw different videos. We're also going to test different image sizes. So we're both going to test 640 um, and also 1280. So if you're running 1280, you won't really get real time performance compared to 640. So you definitely need to run 640 if you want to run real time performance. We also have these packs here. So basically just suitcases running at an airport when you're going to pick it up. So we're going to see how it performs on that. I guess it would probably be pretty similar to this one here, but I really want to test it out on some of these um, some of these images as or videos as I showed here, which is very complex, and this will give you a way better understanding of and overview how these models compare to each other. So we also have other bunch of different videos in here that we can throw through it. Uh, this might also be pretty interesting where we have some different scenarios. We both have cars. We will have some pedestrians here walking on the sidewalk. So this is also a pretty cool use case. So if you want to run these models for the YOLOV8, you just need to clone the Autolytics GitHub repository. And for YOLOV9, the YOLOV9 GitHub repository. Then you can use the detect scripts from both of the frameworks and you can run them directly. I've already cloned the YOLOV9 here, as you can see, and then we have a detect script. We can directly run that. I even have like just um, the code here or like the Python script that we need to run. So we need to specify the image size, the confidence score, the device, the weight files. So I've just downloaded weight files from the GitHub repository as well, where Autolytics, it will download automatically if it is not downloaded already. And then we just need to specify the source here. You can specify the source, either your webcam, image file or a video file as in this example. So we can directly take this one here. Let's just run an example so you guys can see how it works. Let's just minimize this, open a new terminal, and let's now open a new command prompt. 
There we go. So first of all here, we need to CD into our YOLO directory, and then we should be able to run our command directly. I've not done any changes, just pasted it in here. So there we go, it's going to open it up. It will look similar to YOLO v8. So right now we can see that it's running inference around 75 milliseconds um, for processing a single image. We can even see here the post-processing and also the pre-processing, the number of objects that, and types of objects that is detecting. So this is the city road cars traffic. So here we can see a model running. This is the Yolo V9C model. We can see that it pretty much detects all the cars here driving around in this video. As we can see, we get some false predictions down here for traffic light, but it is really low confidence score. Again, we're not filtering our results based on that right now, but pretty much all the cars here driving on the road is act like detected. You can even see the cars up here in the top left corner. When they come up here, even in the top right corner, it is pretty much detected all over the frame. This is on 12. 80 images so this is rather large image resolution you can also see it's a bit laggy and we're running around like 75 milliseconds so that's around 15 frames per second so it's not real time i'm running this on a 3070 graphics card so this actually looks pretty cool we can just try to see the results directly if we go up and change the image resolution so right now we can just set the image resolution to 640 and you'll probably need to run that if you want to have real-time performance doesn't really matter what gpu you're using and that is often the case that so we're just running on 640. so let's just try to see it it's just going to open up the exact same thing right now we can see that we missed some cars here um, in the line going down on the highway but we still get some pretty good detections pretty much all the detections here we can see it's flickering a bit more we still get some false predictions down here for the traffic signs, but generally here we can see that we're still detecting all the cars, at least the cars driving here. It is a bit difficult to detect these cars over to the left. We miss some up at the top right corner, but now we basically also have like half the size as we had before. So this is with the new YOLV9 model C version. We can also try out the E version, which will probably be slower, but let's just try that out. We just need to swap out this one and we're going to run it and let's see the results. So this is just on the 640, just so we can pair that side by side. So we can see that this model here is not as good as the other one. We're not really detecting like as many cars driving here. We see that we miss a lot of detections in the middle of the frame. So this model is not as good as the other one. We can also see the confidence score is rather low. Like some of them are down to like 0.20 or something like that. So this is not as good as the other model. But again, if we're upscaling the image using 1280, we pretty much detect every single car in this video. So here we can see side by side the comparison of YOLO V9 and also YOLO V8. By just looking at these predictions for this single video here, it looks like that the YOLO V9 model is actually better compared to the YOLO V8 model on smaller objects. As we can see when these cars here are up at the top of the image, which is actually like very far away from the camera position. So these are very small objects and I don't feel like YOLO V8 is capable of predicting those cars, even though we're using like 12 80 um, images and also using some of the larger models with YOLO V8. But if we look at the inference time, YOLO V8 is still faster compared to YOLO V9. And I feel like that is generally like the case when I've been testing out different videos and so on, and also the different model variations. So if we're taking a look at these bags and suitcases running on this conveyor belt at an airport, we can actually see that I feel YOLO V8 performs better compared to YOLO V9. It both runs faster, but it doesn't get as many false predictions here and there. And we can also see for the YOLO V9, it had like a very large prediction in the front of the frame. Like sometimes it just detected everything as a ship. And we also got some overlaps here and there with persons walking in and, in, in and so on where it had multiple detections, even though it was the same person. Also for the inference speed, the YOLO V9 model will act like running with the PyTorch model. So this is not optimized for ONX, TensorRT or anything. It's just a raw PyTorch model that I'm using with the framework and so on, which is built up on top of that. But for infer inference time with the YOLO V9 model, it was around 24, 25 milliseconds per image. So this is basically just how long it takes to process a single image. But when I was using the YOLO V8 major model, which is comparable to the YOLO V9C model, then it acts like significantly faster and it runs around 10, 11 milliseconds to process a single frame. So that is significantly faster, like two and a half times faster compared to the v 9 model. So it, it is slower, even though it acts like mentioned that the model size is significantly lower as well for the v 9 models. But there's definitely a trade off with both models as always. You can't get the best of both worlds. You definitely need to test out both models just because they mentioned that v 9 has better performance on the benchmarks like the Coca data set. That doesn't mean that your model will be better if you're using that on your own data set compared to YOLO V8. You also need to take a look at the model sizes just because the model size is smaller for the YOLO V9 model compared to the YOLO V8 model. It doesn't mean that it actually like runs faster, at least for the raw 
PyTorch models. So I think these are some pretty cool comparisons. We definitely need to test it out way more. The Yolv9 framework and so on around the models need to mature a bit more and so on. But again, this is just to give you guys a better understanding, a better overview, so you don't just like go with Yolv9 because like it is the new uh, version and is superior on the benchmarks compared to Yolv8. So definitely test both now. So I hope you have learned a ton this video here. I hope we gave you a quick overview over some of the benefits and also some of the downsides by using these models. So thank you guys for watching this video here. If you're interested in any of my courses, definitely go in and check them out on my website. We both have optic tracking. We go over all the theory, research papers, how you can implement model architectures directly in code from scratch. Again, if you're interested, jump into my website, check them out, or else I'll just see you next week, guys. Until then, happy learning.